everybody. Welcome to Thought Sauna. This is a podcast where we talk about weird dreams, odd laws, and interesting thoughts. I'm Brett Hanrahan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it, it was an invisible nickname. It's oh, okay. a new thing I'm inventing. I'm Sam Knife Boy Risley. <laughs> The, the greatest superhero of our generation. I just looked at the knife sitting on my desk and went, okay, there we go. I'm right on. If it works, it works. Hi, everybody. I'm champion of the 2018 Denton Game of Memes, Cyan Haskins. Woo! Returning right. champion. Three-year champion. Three years ongoing. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in the studio. How does it feel? I know that meme base offered to make you CEO. Uh, what did you say to that offer? Uh, I'm, I'm, I do the game of meme tournaments. I do it for the fun. I do it for the charity work. Uh, I'm not, I, I, I win because I, I just, I've been doing it for, for decades now, but I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for the fame or the position or power or anything. I'm, I'm in it for the, the good cause that the game it's, of meme gives you. It's just for the love of the memes. That's all it is. All right. Uh, this episode sponsored by the Game of Meme. Pick it up at five below for five dollars, or order it off Amazon for twenty. It's up to you, yeah. really, what you want to do. Or the other Game of Meme that is out there somewhere, and it's way better. Who fucking knows? But they're both really bad. <laughs> Without further ado, let's just get into <laughs> it. Uh, who wants to go first? Uh, I guess I can. No, you're. Are you doing? Are you doing the Pringles? Yes. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Save we gotta, that for last. We'll save that for last. All oh, right. Okay. I'll go first with my law. All right. So, in Louisiana. Oh, my home. In your in your little home hometown of Louisiana. Yeah. It is illegal to rob a bank and then shoot at the bank teller with a water pistol. Yeah. No, I was there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. Wait. Yeah. How, Wait, how does so that... hold up. Back back up for a second. I like <laughs> that for some reason just all went over my head. Say it again, but slowly. Yeah, I, I guess I said it too fast that time. In, <laughs> in Louisiana. <laughs> all right, you follow me? In lazy Louisiana. Uh-huh. It is illegal to rob a bank and then shoot at the bank teller with a water pistol. So it's totally legal to rob a bank otherwise. Yeah, I've done it. Okay, well, I, mean, I guess I'm off to Louisiana. I'll see you guys later. Just uh -oh. Sam, Sam is a, I mean, he's infamous for his love of robbing banks. Yeah. Uh, he's just so about it. Yeah, he man. follows all Free the money. bank robbing news stories. Free money. <laughs> That's what it is. So, so, Asain, I want to hear more about the event from from someone's point of view that was there yeah i remember uh that law was made because of me actually oh yeah yeah well, because Cyan what happened was, was the water gun well what happened was i robbed well. the bank and i pointed the water gun and i was like <laughs> and i shot the water and then in court i was like oh but i didn't have an actual gun so it wasn't an actual robbery and they were like you right and i got off scot-free but then they're like we can't have that happen again so they put that law in place so did you actually like take the money from the bank? Yeah, because it was legal. Yeah, it could. Yeah, the law wasn't made yet. But you yeah. didn't. Yeah. But but it was the it was the water gun that they were most like ah. Yeah, because like the girl just got a perm and I sprayed the water oh, in her hair. Why'd you do that? I, I thought it was natural. I didn't know it was a perm. <sighs> that's that's unfortunate, man. That. You accidentally Did sprayed you... her perm and she just deflated completely. Just. Yeah, that's exactly. I have no how... idea how perms work. She was a witch. Uh, Sam, <laughs> do you know what a perm is? No. It is. Because <laughs> I was like, why would she deflate? Sam, a perm is when you have straight hair and you get it chemically altered to be curly. Oh. Yeah. It's like the opposite of a relaxer, which is making your hair straight. It's. It's it's like what your dad did to your hair when you were very very little. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess you don't remember it. I was there. I remember it clearly. I remember being like Gregory. <laughs> Come on, Greg. You got to do it. And he was like, 
Come on, guys, Greg, stop. do it for the fine, Greg. He was like, come on, Brett and Cyan, stop. We were like, Gregory, come on, do it. He's like, all right, fine. And then you rolled it into your little baby head. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes, it, because it's... Cyan, you were alive at that point. Yeah, Brett and I were both back. That was back when we were in college. Yeah. Yeah. S- Sam was a wee tyke. We were there when you were born. And then I aged 21 years in the mere span of five months. All at one time. That's the... pretty incredible. Uh, That's what happens when you age in barriers. Yeah. Big... Oh. So. <laughs> bear... <laughs> All right. I just got that. One day I'm going to uh... open the podcast with that. One day I'm going to open it with that. Please don't. Please do. Please. You know if you do that, that's the one episode that my mom's going to be like, all right, I should give them another chance. And then she's going to, like, a bear thing. And then she's going to look it up. And then she's going to see you in the Google images. What Google images are associated with me? Because every time I look up my, every time I look up my name, a fucking boat from Canada comes up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I remember do I remember it. I remember the boat. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Canadian icebreaker Samuel Risley. Sam, I think you should go back to your glory days as a boat. You were doing such good work. I'm like an anamorph but for machines. Machinery. All right. It's a lot harder to get back into human form. <laughs> yeah. It it takes a lot of willpower. But I'm glad you did it uh, to come come to the studio today for this episode. Of course. Yeah, I know you were boating around yesterday, and I was like, man, he's going to have to wake up and have that hangover and everything. And the, Yeah, that being a boat hangover. And I, I heard you Wicked. were it, like you were late, and you were like, oh, God, I'll never get back home in time to record. I got to turn into a motorcycle. Uh, and then you accidentally turn into an airplane because you don't it, – it's hard. You know, it's hard to specify which one you're going to turn into. I'm also that man who once ate an entire airplane. You're the same? Wow. Okay. Did, did they make a law for that? No, no. He totally did it legally. Okay. Y- he being you, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to preserve that secret identity. The what, what? What's your secret identity? Knife man? Boat man. <laughs> <laughs> no. no how one ma- how many do you have? I'm knife boy. I'm boat man. I'm airplane eater boy. Ah. Uh, um. What now? What airplane eater boy? Yeah. Tell me. Tell me how you decide whether it's boy or man in the title, because you kind of switch <laughs> off. I want to know your thought process through that. Uh. Does each persona have their own like age? Like their no. own specific lore? Then no, why is that boy? Airplane eater man? Airplane Eater Boy is actually the oldest. Oh. Okay. So they do all have their own like little lore and backstory. Yes. Yeah. So you so But you have to read you have to read you have to read my comics in order to understand. <laughs> I can't yeah. I can't it would take too long to explain it. I mean, there's just so many. I don't know where to start. So I, I, I don't know. I'm just gonna probably Wikipedia all that information. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's a, it's okay. Just so like pl- donate to my PayPal. So. <laughs> back to the bank thing. Can we get back to the <laughs> oh, bank thing? Oh, right. I forgot the thing. The thing. The original thing. Yeah. I want to talk about the bank teller being a witch. Okay. Ah, and that's on, why they were. On. That's why they were so pissed off. That you sprayed them with with a water gun. Yeah, because it, which is melt underwater. She died, and they were like, "We're trying to like set up some human witch, you know, relations." Because if one thing that the South loves, it's witches. We yeah, we love. <laughs> I think witches. you mean if it's one thing the the South loves, it's putting blame on witches. If there's one thing the South loves, it's tying bricks to the feet of witches and throwing them into the lake. It, it's just so fun. If there's one thing the South loves, it's trying to blame people they don't agree with. You know what, though? I'm glad that this bank is an equal opportunity employer and hired a witch. They're trying to That's be a good point. progressive. You know what? I really right. do appreciate that, Louisiana. You're doing the most. You're doing the most. What, what advantages could a witch have in being a bank teller. 
Uh, they she could can... have their familiar count the cash for them. True. I love True. that. Yeah, the familiar would probably be, uh, I don't know, like an eagle or something to like try yeah. to get some like patriotic points with the humans. You can. Uh... Well, in Louisiana, it's Damn, probably an alligator or a crocodile, whichever one is native to uh, that area. Yeah. yeah, true. True. I, f- I feel like seeing an alligator like with some reading glasses on and just counting, you know, uh, change. I'm going to Google reason pictures to go to of bank. alligators with reading glasses on now. Go for it, Sam. The world's your oyster. Please do, buddy. honestly. I would love that. They can, witches can do the thing, like in the Harry Potter movies, where like the pens are moving for them. Yeah. Right? So they could get, they could get so much paperwork done, they don't even have to pay attention to it. And I'm thinking if the witch was high level enough, like in this modern A world. A ninth they level spellcaster. Like yeah. There can be like an anti-robbery shield. Ooh. Yeah. An, anti, an anti-water shield to protect against those squirt guns. That was, unfortunately, that was a live that was and the learn worst part. thing. That was, a tenth, that was the worst that was part a of that level event. spell. <laughs> it's, you, you knew about that when you robbed the bank. Uh, you knew she, she, she was a little careless. You know, she didn't have a water protecting spell on her. Yeah, and I was like, I'm going to teach you this lesson. And then you killed her. Yeah, and now she knows. <laughs> now she well, knows. she knew for the entire rest of the ten minutes she was alive. Yeah, which were, in fact, in agony. Yeah. That's fun. This is a fun podcast this where we a, talk about fun things. This is a fun podcast with fun situations. <laughs> so, as I was typing in alligator with sunglasses, one of the suggestions popped up that was alligators with Down syndrome, and I was like, wow, that's really offensive. What the fuck? Uh, well, I do, mean, animals can it, have Down syndrome. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I, that makes sense since it's a chromosome thing, and all all living things on Earth use chromosomes. Yeah, you got it. You figured it out. It's kind of. I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. However, I will say the pictures of alligators with sunglasses are making me very happy. Well, I'm I'm glad you found them. Whatever happened to the reading glass? Yeah, I was gonna say that that was the original search. Right. Right. Let me fix that. Oh my God. All right. While while Sam's doing that. Uh, why don't we just go hunt and move on to our next segment, the the interesting thoughts. Oh no! Yes. Oh Sam no! Poses. Sam, 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 speak to me. Alligator- What's happening? I googled alligators with reading glasses, and all that comes up is alligator skin reading or er, glasses cases. No! Uh, <laughs> why? What's the point, y'all? Uh, what are y'all doing? Ugh. Sometimes I just want to see a fucking alligator with some reading glasses reading a nice book. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know? That's what I'm saying. Alligators are in such a bad light in the human view. Whatever we can do to, like, bond. We need to bond the humans and the alligators together. Which is probably why there's so many alligator stealing laws well, you know what? Louisiana. You know, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but I read it somewhere. And apparently alligators are technically immortal. Uh, uh like we've never we've in terms of like lifespan, we've never seen an alligator die of just old age. Really? Like it, I'm pretty sure like zoologists as long as we've ha- been able to have alligators like under study, we've never seen one die of old age, either like injuries or diseases. Christ, huh? That's like, let, terrifying. Like, let me Thanks, let me Sam. Google. What, Sam? You get you get to that factoid. We'll we'll somehow get it into this interesting thought that Sign has from us. Okay, so this thought is uh from me from my own little noggin. Um, hold on, hold on. I just looked it up. Crocodiles have no such thing as old age. A seven-year-old crocodile is as good as a 70-year-old one in terms of agility and their life parameters. Aging has no effect on them. Although they can't die of natural aging, they also can't live forever. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Yeah. God, that's, that's... Scary. Do you think we were we were just too lazy to hang around like alligators for that long? 
Like we did it for seventy years. I'm like, ah, they'll probably never die. And then we just gave up. Well, I mean, by seventy, like seventy years, we're pretty much done with our lives. Hey, 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 hey. We got we got a solid hundred if we live a healthy life. All right, that's thirty years. I'm guessing I got like twenty left in me tops, man. <laughs> Jesus, from yeah. all those fireballs. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking no. like a solid like a two for me. Anna, Anna oh. predict my 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 little sister predicted that uh. She she told me, Sam, you're middle aged, and I was like, Anna, I'm 20. And she's like, You could die when you're 40. Jesus I was like, Christ, oh. Anna. I mean, yeah, you can. Anna Savage. Well, you need to stop playing with alligators in your free time, Sam. That's probably why she she brought that up. I guess so. Anyways, on to whatever the next thing was. Please. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, this thoughts from my own noggin. Uh, we vaguely talked about this, but when we talked about it, uh, it was kind of like role reversal. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up now. What if Tommy Wiseau was one of the sharks on Shark Tank? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess what if? He's, he has a lot of money. He could do it. He's got a lot of money from somewhere. Possibly the room. Possibly of royal descent. Some rumors say maybe maybe he's so good on the stock market. Maybe he got a lotto ticket. He's got a lot of money to spend around. Yeah. And you know what the thing is? Speaking what? of Tommy Wiseau, what would be the most likely time for him to be a special guest on Shark Tank right now? Yep. Right after right after the disaster artist fucking made bank. Right after the disaster artist. And then the theatrical re-release of The Room across yeah. the nation. And he's he's doing like interviews and stuff. Yeah. Now would be the perfect time for him to be a shark. Yeah. He the shark the people would come in and like pitch their idea and he'd be like, ha ha ha, I'll give you twenty million dollars. No. And if it's a and if it's an idea he really doesn't like, he's like, you're tearing me apart. And that's the only. There it is. There's one of the three things Sam knows about Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. uh, (laughs) I told Sam to do research on Tommy Wiseau, and he literally only learned that he made the room. And then just now learned that quote. And that's it. You're I, tearing me apart, person trying to give me that pitch. I, I gave you like a week and a half to like study. I'm going to tear apart your product. <laughs> well, Sam specializes in, he just has little to work with and he just makes it into so much. But yeah, I can just imagine Tommy Uso on Shark Tank being like, uh huh. So that's product. What does it do for me? But there's like always two. There's always like a rumored a... second version of the episode. What? What? Wait, did you guys not know that? What? What are you talking there's a, about? There's a rumor that there's two different versions of the room. Ah, uh, I don't because, know about that, dude. Well, no, the the. Like, and I mean in terms of, like, very slight difference, because supposedly the director didn't know how to record, f- or how to, like, switch the film that was going to movie theaters to, like, what would then be sent to home on, like, I guess, DVD around that time. So... Tommy Wiseau was the director. Yeah. Right. And he didn't know how to do that, so what he did was he had two cameras record at the same time. Well... No, he just he bought two cameras because he wanted two cameras. Yeah. I mean, if the disaster artist is a reputable source and the movie is as reputable as the book, he just did it because he wanted two cameras because it was a professional movie. Because it was a professional movie. But, you know, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, there was that second camera. If they were recording every scene the same, I guess there are two versions of it. One at a slightly different angle than the one we've seen. I would like to say that I learned I heard this from my dad. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Come You're through. Always good, always good for us. So, it, it, what do they what do they call the people presenting their products on Shark Tank? They don't have a name. They minnows. just kind of come in and they just come in and I like minnows. All right, cool. So the minnows come in and and like present their idea. The minnows grande. <laughs> yeah, you got the it. The big ones are the minnows grande. And I are you are you like implying that Tommy would be a like a very adept shark? Yeah, like he's like asking, he's like, 
so how many sales have you made this year? And they're like, I made a hundred million dollars in sales. And he's like, ha ha ha, what a story. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, for a second, I thought you were going to ride on my, uh, my tr- bleach train and be like, Tommy Wuso would be a very good soul reaper. Sam, I didn't know the bleach train was the thing I could ride, but I really do want to ride it now. I didn't know that the bleach train was uh I didn't know it was, was at about the to station. go off. I I didn't know that we were getting on it. But you know what? Sure. Tommy okay, Wuso has a bonkai. Be <laughs> honest with me. Tommy Wuso looks like a, in the room, he looks like he could be a like fucking whatever they're called, soul reapers. Tom, he probably is. He looks like a super villain. I mean, yeah. So yeah, he looks like he could a be a live action Bleach where Tommy Russo plays Aizen, the main villain of Bleach. Tommy Russo plays Ichigo. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Russo plays everyone. Tommy Russo is everybody. <laughs> it's time to activate my Bankai. And then Tommy Russo plays Orihime too. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, duh. Stupid. And then well, Mark is there somewhere. Mark yeah. Yeah. Where is he? Uh Greg Sestero is, I don't know, Rukia. Sure. He's the one that granted Tommy his powers. Yeah. He truly awakened Tommy. Yeah. And Tommy's like, I have to defeat the Hollows. I have to defeat... Ah! (laughs) (laughs) Is that what you wanted, Sam? (laughs) Yep. I'm happy now. I'll give you $300,000 for 25% equity. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll give you this ball of lint and uh <laughs> have you gotten FDA approval on that lint? I have not. I've uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought here. What train of thought? What train of thought did you have, Sam? I was going to go with lint and make a joke out of it and then I just lost it. I really want to know what you were going to say about lint, why it popped into your head, what kind of joke you were going to make with lint. I have no clue, man. Yeah, all right. Well, that all, that's all good. That's all fine and dandy. That's all fine and dandy. Sam, if you if you had a product that you could pitch in front of Tommy Wiseau, probably the greatest filmmaker of our generation uh, and every generation before and after that, what would it be? The Harry Potter series. You can't. You can't. Well, they have to. They have to not already be invented, Sam. That's the are thing you sure about Tommy Wiseau doesn't doesn't know? Of, are you sure that Tommy that Tommy Wiseau knows about Harry Potter? Well, actually, wait a second. Probably not. Yeah, he probably doesn't. Sam, you could probably sell Tommy Wiseau the Harry Potter series. Like, I love magic, as long as they get to star in it. <laughs> <laughs> the old, lo- and then, and I'd, be, I'd be like, listen, I know there's, there's seven books in my series, but I want you to make eight movies. Good idea. We get more money. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, when, I, I, I want everything in the movies to be the same as, like, they are in the, like, new ones. I want to get Daniel Radcliffe... Emma Watson and uh, I can't remember Ron's name. Oh. No, I so, don't know. So what who, is Tommy gonna do? I don't know who any of those people are. Tommy we get is me and my friend Greg. <laughs> Tommy's Dumbledore. no. I play Harry Potter. I'm main character. We'll get Daniel Radcliffe to play Dumbledore. Okay, you it'll know be what? a nice kind of. I think Daniel would be down for that. I think it'd be great. I think he's gonna do that anyway in like the Harry Potter remasters. Yeah, eventually. You know? Cause, Cause they're gonna like the original cast is gonna be there, but they're not gonna be, you know, themselves. Yeah. Here, let me just uh, let me call up Daniel real quick. Please. Oh no. How did you hey. know what that means? Hey, Danny. You wanna be Dumbledore? I... Oh yeah, that sounds good, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Awesome. I'll let you know when we get the rights to the production. Cut one, wait. Sam. Let's go. <laughs> wait, right, wait, Sam, later, Sam. Daniel. Wait, 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 wait. Don't hang up on him. I want to talk to Daniel. Okay, okay. Daniel, I have some, I have, I have some friends who want to say hi to you. Hi, hi, hi Sam's friends. What's going on? <laughs> Daniel, how's it going? 
It's pretty good. I just got the role of Dumbledore for the next Harry Potter movies. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, have, have you been hanging out in, like, in Australia recently? Or, uh, uh, how's, yep. how's your, mm-hmm. how's your voice doing? Yeah. Yeah, it, it must be. It, you're finally done with the series, so it's good to vacation. Give yourself a little break between movies. I mean, that happened a while ago, but... Well, as as you recall, I did have my movie The Swiss Army Man come out recently. Oh my god, that was almost over a year ago now, actually. Yeah, it was a while ago. Could... <laughs> well, now I've found a new job, so I'm set. What's your new job? Anyway, playing Dumbledore and you guys' new reboot of the right. Harry Potter franchise. I'm I'm so glad you're so you're so cool with Tommy was also, so playing. I Harry see you're Potter. 26 minutes into this uh, 30 minute podcast. <laughs> oh right, you are Daniel. Why don't you get Sam back and he'll he'll give us his dream. <laughs> I see you guys. No. <laughs> I am the podcast now. <laughs> Bye, Daniel. So, it was good how, talking to you again. How did Daniel leave? What was that? Uh, he he just... fell back into my phone. Oh. Oh. Right. He like came out. Of your phone? Yeah, didn't you know that Daniel's actually a wizard? That's why they cast him for Harry Potter. Oh, it makes sense. True, true. You're yeah. right. You're right. So why don't you give us that uh, that uh, salty dream, Sam? So to preface, this is a recurring dream I have had <laughs> for <laughs> years sure now, and that's the worst part. Sam has told us about this dream. Like he, like he tells us about everything else he's excited about multiple times, uh, and know, forgets about know, those times. I'm awful about it. Yeah, every time. But so the dream usually starts off simple enough. I'm usually driving to another country to meet my dad. Yeah, simple enough. Even though my dad actually lives in the sa- like the same state as me. But in the dream, I'm driving to another country, and it's always a different country that I'm driving to. In the most recent one, I was driving to Egypt. What, and what was the most recent one, Sam? About two months ago. Oh, dang. Okay. I get this, I get this, this dream like every three or four months. All right, <laughs> go on. But so I was driving to Egypt, and, and every time I get stopped at the Border Patrol office because... You know, that's a thing. Yeah. And everything's going totally fine. And there's like two lanes. There's my lane and then the lane le- to my left. And every time this guy and his daughter pull up in the lane to my left and we're both of us are getting questioned and they say, all right, we need you to come with us. And we're like, OK, what did we do? And so then we they take us out of our cars. And for some reason, in the last dream, I was driving a dune buggy. So anyways, we get taken to the, we get taken to this building that it, like half of it is hanging over a cliff and the other half is like in, in the, on the solid ground. Kind yeah, of imagine like, over a cliff. yeah, kind of imagine like the building from the like, uh, series of unfortunate events, like book three, but, uh. So they take us into that and we walk in and there's a like window on the floor that's supposed to be looking down into the cliff, like down the cliff face. But there's, it's like completely black. Like you can't see through it. It's just a solid sheet of black glass. And then there's two doors in this room that they take us into. And the uh, guy is always like, all right. He points at me and goes, you go into that room. And as I open it, that as I open the room to the right, a body falls out, and he goes, never mind, go to that one. And so I go to the other door to the left of that one, and I get in that room. And so he takes the uh, father and daughter and places them over the glass. And I'm kind of, like, peeking through the door this entire time, and they're, like, standing with their legs spread over the glass. And I can't see what he's doing, but he's, like, tossing stuff on the glass, and then it starts glowing, and I hear a growl. And suddenly the father and daughter are just gone. Like there's nothing like remaining of them. And then he pulls me out of the closet and positions me over it with my legs spread on like the windowsill. So that way I'm like looking down into the glass and he starts chanting and starts throwing stuff onto the glass. 
And that's when I realized the stuff he's throwing onto the gr- glass is Pringles. <laughs> and every, sing- every single time this dream happens, it's always Pringles. It's always Pringles. Always original flavored Pringles. It's never not Pringles. No, it's always Pringles. He even has, like, the tube that he's tossing them out of. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, chanting, and, like, signs start to appear on the Pringles as they land on the glass. And I realize they're numbers, and then plus or minus signs, and then equal signs. And no matter what, how I add up the numbers or subtract the numbers or whatever, they always add up to 14. And then I, as I'm, like, looking down, they start to glow, and, like, there's a bright light, and I see eyes and a growl, and then I wake up. There, there's a lot in that dream. You getting, you getting pulled over, brought to this creepy series of unfortunate house, seeing this mysterious, you know, black glass. Your friends disappearing. Uh, well, I think I it's don't, fairly I obvious. They just disappear. It's fairly obvious what this dream means. What? Uh, you're really craving some Pringles. God, that, honestly that, though, that's honestly about it, Sam. I think. I think what that, what that dream is, is like it's your brain playing a commercial for pringles it's advertising so you wake <laughs> the up most like messed up pringles commercial you wake up and you're like oh yeah pringles and you eat a lot of pringles and they're like yes we got the money okay i'm not gonna lie now that you mention it i really want to make this a super bowl commercial <laughs> i think i th- i don't think we change a thing yeah i think we keep it just as cryptic and messed up it, you go into a room and a body falls out is it a dead body yeah, is it's it, just, or I don't know if it's a dead body, but it's a person's body. It's someone's body. I just imagine that dream playing as a commercial, and then at the very end, after like the fucking eyes open and stuff, it just cuts to like a black Pringles. background with, like, with an, a single can of Pringles. It just says Pringles next to it, and that's the end of the commercial. There's like no narration. Yeah. Nothing fun about it. It's just Pringles. It's not a fun commercial. It's not supposed to be. And fun. then you see, and then no. And then it ends with a jaw closing and a crunch, and then that's the end of the commercial. I like think a jaw closing over the entire screen. What if, Sam, what if you're the Pringles? What if the monster is supposed to be the viewers? The monster is the oh. real humans, you're the Pringles, and it wants some. That black hole is the end of the canister. It's all dark to you. Mm. Oh he reaches my in there. God. And he gets you and you're a Pringle. You're a Pringle. You. You're Pringles. <laughs> you were Pringles all along. Well, man. This is just an eye-opening re- revelation. I have to You're you're Pringle Sam. You're Pringle Sam. You're Pringle Sam. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. I do, and you're a Pringle. The truth hurts, Sam. It you know really what? Does. Own it. You're a Pringle now. You're a Pringle. Just say it. Like, put plus three or something on your stomach, because you're a Pringle, baby. And you can plus own three. it. Yeah, wow. because of your weird... The, the ruins that were... Right. Yeah, the weird math that is on the Pringles for some reason. Yeah. Add to 14. I don't know why. You just want exactly 14 Pringles, I guess. 14 is the number of flavors and ingredients used in our Pringles. <laughs> Pringles. <laughs> 14 natural ingredients, including chip and salt. <laughs> 14 natural ingredients, including chip, salt, and Sam. Yep. Yep. Ma- ma- Sam, maybe whenever you have that dream, that's when those people are, like, extracting the Pringles juices out of your, like, blood. Out of, out of your body. You know? Yeah. The Pringles people come over once every three or four months or so. They get it. They get a syringe. They suck all the Pringle juice out of you. Then they put them in the mold and freeze them overnight. Yeah. And the next morning, they're Pringles. They're Pringles. That's how they're made. <laughs> Thank you for our educational podcast where we learn about how Pringles are made. Yeah, this is actually just a documentary on Pringles. Yep. I'm the creator extended, of all Pringles. We're shooting an extended documentary on this. I think, like Thought Sauna presents the pink, the Pringle dream, and it's like a the hour Pringle long, paradox. Like, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. I think we should do that. You know what? Let's start a budget. Let's like start putting like a dollar every day in a $3. jar. Three dollars. That's all we need. We're already set. Wow. We got our three dollar budget. Amazing. 
That you you know how many Pringles you could buy with three dollars? I don't think uh, you could buy any. Half a I can. Think, I think that's not enough. I'm gonna Google how much Pringles are on Amazon. Yeah, go for it. If you could get some shipped over to my house, that'd be great. I haven't had any in a while. Yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've had a Pringle. Preferably the salt and vinegar Pringles. Ew. I don't know why. I don't even like those, but I need them for <laughs> some reason. It's like the hot wing Doritos. You don't like them, but you but sure you need, need them. them. You sure need them. I can you get you a four th- count variety pack for 13 bucks on Amazon. Only 13? Damn. That's almost uh, 14. <laughs> Amazing. Damn. So, Brett, this is uh, not, not, not sponsored or anything, but Doritos Blaze. Did we have to try those? What what are those? You didn't you didn't see the photo I sent? Brett, I found wall? you Pringles ketchup flavor. Oh yeah. Dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, can't you just put ketchup on a Pringle if that's what you want? I guess not. Why do you need a flavor for that? How lazy can you get? Who doesn't have ketchup? Oh yeah, those. Yeah. Well that's something we need to talk about off the podcast yeah no i want the doritos be, blaze no i want doritos blaze to be on the podcast and i want to get money for it have you actually Saying had we are almost at 40 minutes and i have to take care of something this is a special episode <laughs> oh boy all right the, the episode is going a little long so i want to cut it short but i do actually want to come back to the to a dedicated pringles, pringles. dream episode oh okay I want to I want to break it down bit by bit. I want to I want to dedicate a solid 40 minute episode just to the Pringles dream. We're going to solve this enigma, Sam. We're going to solve we this will. mystery. We will. All right. Well, uh that's going to end our podcast. You can you can find us on Facebook. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we do have, have a fa- Facebook. Yeah, facebookcom sauna. all one word, no capitals. We also have and at Gmail, same thing. <laughs> if you want to submit, your we can include a link thoughts. in the description for it. Sure, yeah, you can. You can even comment on the YouTube video if you want to submit dreams, thoughts, or laws, and we'll be more than more than happy to take them. Uh, so that's it. Uh, <laughs> fucking thank you for thank you for the, my sneeze and my wet boys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you sneeze. Thank you sneeze for me. And my moist, sweaty, soggy boys here in the Thought Sauna. Bring a towel. Bring a towel. Check it out. Cut it. <laughs>